welcome uh, everyone. Uh, my uh, title of my lecture is Misjudging History of Genocide in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, this title uh, has been uh, a product of a research that I've done recently, and the research is concentrated not on transitional justice processes, but on post-transitional justice processes. And that basically means that each party involved in this um, uh, uh, accounting and accountability for what and how happened in the war has used outcomes of transitional processes as a starting point for a reinterpretation of the narrative that transitional processes has produced. Basically what it means that each party is now a assessing good things and damaging things and uh, creating a new approach to um, its role in it. Um, I am, uh, the basis for my research is that I went through all ICTY judgments and I have made a, a very um, simple uh, charts about it. And uh, uh, based on these charts, I've dealt with uh, several issues. One is how come that there was no judgment of genocide at ICTY for 1992. And in order as, as a way of um, uh, preparing you to understand what this geographical link between 92 genocide in Northern Bosnia means, when connected to Eastern Bosnia uh, and 95 genocide, which happened in Srebrenica, I've prepared you actually material from the Milosevic case and the way how we argued the fact that there is a very important connection in, uh, from 92 to 95 genocide and that it is uh, in, possible to understand genocide in 95 only if one understands plan and preparation for the genocide, not just from the moment the war started, but years uh, before. So what I'm going to offer you as a, as a next uh, um, proposition is several of the peace plan maps uh, and by showing you which peace plan maps are uh, of substance and important to follow the uh, war developments in Bosnia, we have Kutliero peace plan from March, June 92, first presented in February 92 to the parties in uh, Bosnia, then Southern plan from 1993, Owen Stoltenberg peace plan also from 93, contact group peace plan from 94, and the final one, Dayton peace plan. Um, so what we did not discuss in detail, and I think it's a very important for uh, Bosnian um, uh, map of crimes is that uh, lawyers very often um, underestimate the uh, need of other non-lawyer groups to understand what is the difference in actus rea evidence and mens rea evidence. When uh, Andrew Kelly was talking about uh, General Radislav Krstic uh, um, trial of genocide and when he was uh, saying that uh, important element is to define in numbers what is um, part of a protected group or part of a part of a protected group. He was actually saying uh, that uh, actus reus evidence for genocide starts with a um, counting of a number of deaths, which is a classical actus reus evidence. And what is important indeed is to establish the crimes and uh, identify the victims, perpetrating groups, individuals, but also to have a very sound, a very important demographic uh, uh, data, which we did an OTP through um, a unit for uh, demographic uh, 
uh, research that was identifying and uh, offering the charts for war losses. And much of the material that we used in all trials across uh, uh, the ICTY was based on these very important demographic changes recorded by our demographers. And they, uh, they, they are used uh, as a basis for uh, actus reus evidence for, for uh, establishing um, uh, losses and and the number of deaths and disappeared and so forth etc. So if you look into this map, this is a, a Yugoslavia ethnic composition by the census of ninety one. So you you will here see when it comes to Bosnia and Herzegovina. Oh, I don't have a cursor to show you. Uh, ah, here. So this is Bosnia. Herzegovina, and you see uh, basically the uh, ethnic distribution. Uh, this purple color is uh, Croat population, green color are um, Bosnian Muslims, and red colors are uh, Serb um, majority municipalities, and this border is very interesting border here. It shows us how the Serb population uh, and majority uh, municipalities actually continue from Bosnia to Croatia. Uh, and this map is very important to bear in mind because even with a one look into the changes in 95 will tell you that a huge, huge um, ethnic uh, uh, composition changes took place due to the war. So the next um, map is, actually this map shows you uh, all municipalities in Bosnia and Herzegovina, and this is quite important because when, um, for example, in Sloboda Milosevic indictment, we had 66 counts. And the way how tribunal actually distributed the counts is that it was based on municipalities. Uh, so it is nothing else than geographic uh, distribution of uh, specific uh, criminal act. So in one count, you might have like 100 different uh, criminal acts that, uh, that took place or were charged in, in indictment. So this is, is, so what's important and interesting here, uh, the, our demographers offered to us uh, as um, evidence tool, uh, they put in each of the municipalities uh, uh, different colors. So if you have just red municipalities that shows that a uh, Serb ethnic group was here in uh, absolute um, majority. In these uh, municipalities, this is Priedor by the way, uh, the color is brownish and it represents almost 50-50 percent of Serbs and Bosnian Muslims. Uh, so you see here very clearly which municipalities were uh, with Muslim majority and uh, blue color here is Croat um, um, majority and all these other colors indicate a different relationship of mixed ethnic composition. So if you would look into these two, um, there's, these are like Priedor almost 50-50 of uh, of Muslims and Serbs, and you have few of these municipalities bordering directly to Serbia, which had a Serbian uh, majority. Uh, so for your visual experience, how, how it, it is clear what happened, this is the map that we had, uh, first map that shows the change ethnic composition in Bosnia and Herzegovina after Dayton. And this is an evidentiary and investigative um, part of, uh, of war crimes uh, prosecutions, important thing because obviously uh, after the war, the next census would be in 2001. And in between the prosecution had to have actually the status quo to see 
the numbers of uh, um, different ethnic groups per municipality. And by some um, uh, strike of uh, inventiveness of our demographic unit, what they've done, they went to the voting registers before the first post date on voting in Bosnia would take place. And based on the voting uh, papers of each individual with the right to vote, they came up with this map that was extremely important for prosecution to argue the case of uh, ethnic changes. And then look at the Priedor, it was brownish. Look at Vlasenica, which was brownish as well. It's now all these muni municipalities become red. And the big question for the prosecutors and investigators is how these changes came about. What exactly happened? But do not forget, when you start your investigation for Actus Reus, you first had actually a mass graves in Priedor area, in this whole northern Bosnia area, and in in, in uh, Eastern Bosnia as well, obviously. But what is so interesting in the, in the investigation, you first count uh, the bodies, you, you uh, count the structed uh, um, religious property and so forth, etc. And then from the map of 97, you see that the ethnic composition changed in favor of a ethnic group in, in a case that we were interested in, in Milosevic case, we were interested in how these different colors municipalities became now red. How did it come about that uh, ethnic composition changed so much? Uh, you know, in understanding this, I will offer you two propositions that we, uh, um, had developed in the Milosevic case and all, all Serb-related cases in Bosnia and Herzegovina is there are two words, ethnic separation and ethnic homogenization. So remember these two terms because we did not invent them in a document from 12 May 93 there were six strategic subjectives published by Republika Srpska Assembly, Bosnian Serb uh, quasi uh, parliament. And in these six strategic objectives, the first objective was ethnic separation. And one of the parallel narratives in understanding what happened in the Bosnia war came uh, in this webinar, uh, almost on daily basis. And the uh, documentary you've seen, why did Serbenza had to fall, have to fall, is the constant presence of international community. One of the discoveries that we made by comparing the peace plan maps from Cudliero to Dayton was something that was quite obvious, especially when you see the maps, and that is that European Commission later in 92, turning into the European Union, before the start of the war in Bosnia and Herzegovina came up with a peace proposal that actually uh, had as a basis ethnic separation. And can you imagine that European Union supported ethnic separation of Bosnia and Herzegovina before the first shot was fired in the war that officially started at 6 April 92. And if you look into the second map from the point of view of our investigation of the crimes where we charged Slobodan Milosevic at that time president of Serbia, is this map. If you connect Cutliero plan with a Serb ambition, how to change its own borders, then you have to connect this red majority or a, a, a Serb conquered territories in Croatia, which are here if you follow the cursor, 
And if you put Cudliero plan uh, together with Serb Croatian territories, then you understand quite well where the Serb post Yugoslav borders were supposed to be. And uh, the thing that we did not appreciate so much when investigating Milosevic's trial was this overlap in understanding between Serbia and international community was, because apparently international community understood and wanted Bosnia and Herzegovina to be ethnically divided in post-Yugoslav times. This plan uh, was uh, not accepted and we had a wonderful evidence uh, how Serbs in Belgrade perceived the Cudillero plan. By the way, Bosnian side, Bosnian Muslim representative, political representative and president of Bosnia and Herzegovina at the time, Ali Izetbegovic, refused this plan in May 92 with support of Americans. But do not forget, in America, this was a, uh, just a change of power between Republicans, uh, George Bush uh, senior, and uh, Democrats coming in power with Bill Clinton. So that was an interesting uh, period in American uh, um, uh, power change. And all initiatives at that time were left to European Union, which was just emerging to be also a political union. Because be before that, it was mostly um, just economic uh, union free market and all, uh, free movement of people and goods and all these sort of important uh, uh, features for, for such kind of union. So what is happening there is that the next plan came about. And this plan was called Vance Oven Plan. And when you read here Vance Plan, this is the Croatian plan that was finalized and uh, effectuated by 15 of January 92 and it's called Vance plan because of the Cyrus Vance uh, representative of the UN who was negotiating ceasefire between uh, Croatian Serbs and, and Croats. So if you now look into just uh, Van Soven plan, you see that this plan did not give up ethnic separation of Bosnia and Herzegovina interesting starting point but it created nine cantons three for serbs three for uh, bosnian muslims three for croats and sarajevo as a tenth canton as a free city accessible and available to all three ethnic groups but if you compare it with uh, uh, Cutillero plan, you see that Serbs fare just a little better when it comes to these crucial contiguity areas that should serve as uh, geographical corridors to connect Serbia proper via Serb designated and claimed territories in Bosnia with Serb territories in Croatia. And these territories would eventually be uh, united in a post-Yugoslav uh, uh, Serbian state. Uh, this plan has been uh, refused uh, by Bosnian Serbs. They were not happy with the maps. They were not happy with the fact that they did not have this area and this area and this area in, uh, in this uh, new projected Serbian state. We'll, we shall pause a little bit by this. By the time in 93, not only ethnic separation was the rule of the game between warring parties encouraged by international community, but now in 93, we are talking about ethnic homogenization in these cantons. Warring parties were made to understand that each of their cantons should be as ethnically homogeneous in their favor than it previously was. 
Van Soven plan encouraged ethnic homogenization in such a way that Croats, Bosnian Croats got involved in the war of ethnic cleansing of their cantons where majority of targeted ethnicity was Bosnian Muslims. And all indictments at the ICTY against Bosnian Croats uh, date from this particular time in the history. Go through all the indictments and 93 is the time that uh, this direct animosity is started. It's interesting that in 93 uh, also the uh, pressure from outside the world to uh, make world leaders and democratic leaders of the world stop ethnic cleansing and suffering of Bosnian Muslims uh, was avoided by America and Brussels and all capitals in the world like London and Paris. And in order to uh, avoid pressure from the public and the voters to intervene, you know what they did? They created Yugoslav tribunal in order to buy some more time. So there was no military intervention against Serb forces in the pl first place, but a uh, tribunal was formed in May 93, about two and a half weeks after Vance Oven plan failed. But the point was that this uh, court sh could never, should never become operational. And if Vance Oven plan was accepted, tribunal would have never probably uh, become uh, operational. But it became operational, uh, it did not have a budget, you know, they just had a building and one of the reasons, and the first chief prosecutor said it uh, publicly and in his book, it became operational because of an extremely dedicated investigative team led by a lawyer, Vasvia Vidovic, uh, representing uh, Bosnia Herzegovina as a state and Alia Izetbegovic's blessing. And they went to collect evidence of war crimes. Sometimes they had to take the archives from the Serb held territories, avoiding the bullets, Serb bullets that, that uh, would stop them. So it is fair to say that without such a dedication of a Bosnian Herzegovina investigative team, tribunal would never uh, be able to start investigating these serious crimes. And the first case uh, they had was a mid-level to low-level level, uh, Serb uh, uh, camp uh, guard or commander uh, Dusko Tadic, uh, who um, was uh, indicted for the crimes that took place in 92 in this very uh, area of Priedor that you, you saw uh, on the first map. Uh, so um, then this plan failed and you would think now that the next play, peace plan would be uh, more generous to Bosnian Muslims, but no. This Owen Stolterberg plan was actually, uh, uh, Lord David Owen called it uh, Tujman Milosevic plan for Bosnia. Because as you can see, how it favored Serb side, because this northern corridor is now becoming much more connected with uh, the rest of, of Serb held territories and over Serbia. And Croats are getting actually quite interesting chunk of land that would maybe allow Croatia to expand its territory to Serbia. But this plan obviously was uh, rejected by uh, Bosnian Serbs. And you see these three enclaves are existing. Why in 93, uh, Amprofor uh, Commander Morion came to visit in Srebrenica and people in Srebrenica almost uh, um, um, took him as a hostage and say, you're not leaving until you promise us to save us and then United Nations proclaimed and uh, Srebrenica and Zepa and Gorazde as protect, 
the safe areas, not safe havens. Areas was a term that they had to think up in a New York, in a uh, headquarters of UN, because safe haven would still compel UN to protect people. And safe area did not have that legal uh, implication. So it was a huge debate how to call it. And safe havens has been uh, ruled out. So Srebrenica, Zepa, and Gorazde, together with the city of Tuzla and uh, uh, um, Sarajevo, I think, and a few other places became safe areas. Uh, so the next peace plan was contact group peace plan. And this is very important plan because Americans took over from European Union. Clinton got more empowered uh, to take a lead. And in uh, February, uh, he uh, summoned representatives of Croatia, Croatian state, and representative, Muslim rep representatives from Bosnia and Herzegovina, and he said the following, we cannot reach the peace if you all turn out in the bad guys. We need to single out Serbia for what Serbia is doing, so you two are going to cooperate politically and militarily. So when it comes to respons shared responsibility or uh, equalization of the role of uh, Serbia and Croatia in the war in Bosnia and Herzegovina, you see that Croatia engaged in a war and atrocities against Bosnia and in 93, after Van Sovan plan, in this sort of uh, extent, but that Croatia as a state signed Washington agreement, which was now the basis for Dayton agreement and for territorial uh, composition of Bosnia as we know now. Washington agreement now does not show us green and blue color of Bosnian Muslims territories and Croatia, but it's now green gray color saying that these now cooperate politically and militarily. And uh, contact group plan was very generous again to Serbia. You see that these areas are still there, but Serb wants uh, Western uh, Bosnia to be conquered and all these area then to be connected with, with the Croatian uh, held, uh, Serb held uh, areas in Croatia. And, uh, and this is this very important historical moment that Croats and role of Croatia cannot be equalized by the role of Serbia. And together, Bosnian Muslim forces, which represent official armed forces of recognized UN state, Bosnia and Herzegovina, and Croatian forces now fight Serbia and Serbian forces in all of these important areas. And basically, in 95, you will see that Serbian armed forces are defeated. And one of the reasons why they were defeated is this military cooperation between Bosnian Muslims and Croats supported by Zagreb, by Croatia as neighboring state. And Dayton Agreement shows something fascinating. We will watch the Pax Americana movie before um, Tuesday, um, uh, next week, 7th of July, because one of the major negotiators in the Dayton Agreement was in this documentary. He is a former, and at that time, the then Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, of Croatia. His name is Mate Granic. And he will explain us more about how comes that this whole area now is uh, not Serb, and why Serbian territory has been reduced to this uh, strip. But as you can see in Dayton, you don't have Serb held territories in Croatia anymore. So uh, this map of Dayton corresponds very much with the ethnic composition map that you have seen uh, made in 97 by our uh, demographers. So if you go back to premeditation, and if you keep in mind the date on map, then you see the following. Premeditation 
did not just start in May 92 when these six strategic objectives by Republika Srpska Assembly were formed. But if you look at them, in these six strategic objectives, don't you see that it responds very much so by the borders of uh, Republika Srpska as it is now? And uh, they gave up access to the sea uh, quite early, but not before they had here a Serb autonomous province of uh, Eastern Herzegovina. And Eastern Herzegovina leaned towards the whole area which we knew in the previous years as Dubrovnik Republic. Because Dubrovnik Republic, as I told you, was more than the city and it covered this area bordering directly on Herzegovina i.e. Bosnia and Herzegovina state. So uh, this is uh, what was the basis for our strategic explanations why we do not see any difference between Mensrea, now we are talking not about Ectus Reals, but another formal uh, requirement to prove uh, criminality of an accused is an Actus Reals, what is the result of criminal actions, and a mens rea, what was and when criminal intent uh, came about. In, and I'm going to close my presentation now just by telling you that in our uh, explanation of Milosevic's role in crimes in Bosnia and Herzegovina and all these 66 counts for which we had the counts of genocide in this area of Bosnia and this area of Bosnia, we claim the following. There were five stages in planning in Milosevic's uh, time as a uh, president of Serbia. First plan was centralization of Serbia, still then uh, Republic of Yugoslavia, by annexing uh, Kosovo and Vojvodina. This was the first stage that Milosevic succeeded by 91. Second stage was to centralize Yugoslav Federation in the same way they centralized Serbia. So that Serbia as the biggest republic will have everything to say and Yugoslavia will become some sort of greater Serbia, but then it will be different name. In this Milosevic failed and from the moment he failed to impose his power through communist party to other republics, they devised the plan to form a post-Yugoslav Serbia by inclusion of parts of Croatian territories and the whole of Bosnia. And in this stage, crimes in Croatia took place because they had to secure these territories. So formation of Republika Srpska Krajina um, in the period from 92 to 95 actually was a uh, beginning of criminality of the plan as prepared and devised on Belgrade. When a uh, third stage of the plan uh, and criminality of the planning, uh, planning was when uh, Serbia did not secure the whole of Bosnia-Herzegovina in this uh, post-Yugoslav uh, or ramp Yugoslavia as they call it. And because of that, they, designated Serb territories following the same pattern is, as in Croatia. And because designated territories were full of non-Serbs, the plan for criminality uh, was repeated. So Republic, creation of Republika Srpska is, was for us uh, the, the way to show involvement of criminality of Slobodan Milosevic in the first place, but then also as uh, Serbia as a state, which would have been tried or there was a lawsuit against Serbia as a state for crime of genocide. So for Serbia, it was essential for not to prove any genocide charges against Sloboda and Milosevic, because if we were su su successful in that, uh, state Bosnia and Herzegovina could use everything, all judgments and decisions by the court, ICTY, to prove genocide against uh, Serbia as well. So Sloboda Milosevic's case was of an extreme importance for uh, Serbia as well. And there were all constant ways to obstruct the process and process was obstructed mostly by uh, preventing 
uh, witnesses persecution would call to come as a witnesses and to protect and obscure all important documents that were uh, show and might have shown Milosevic's individual responsibility, but in the same time that we show the criminality and responsibility of Serb institutions. So um, let's check what time I'm on. I crossed the time limit, so I'm not going to show you my chat yet, but uh, from my article that is now peer reviewed, but in the discussion time, I hope that we'll have we will have enough time to go to particulars of the ICTY judgments and how these judgments reflect now the reality of the evidence we uh, led in the Milosevic trial, but because there was no judgment in the Milosevic trial, hardly any of the other genocide judgments reflect uh, the uh, holistic situation uh, and involvement or development of genocide as we uh, led in uh, Sobodan Milosevic. Thank you so much. And Arif, as far as I'm concerned, you can start right away. Mm -hmm. yep. Yes? Okay, so we are going to charts because you know now enough to be able to follow it. 91, oh, I need to, to uh -huh. so, so for 91, I've put, I've identified 19 municipalities from the indictments. And indictees were Jelicic, this very person Jeffrey was mentioning, uh, Radoslav Brđanin, Momčilo Krajišnik, Biljana Plavčić, Slobodan Milošević, Radovan Karadžić, Ratko Mladić. And you can see the number of municipal, indictees per municipality and vice versa, number of municipalities per indictees. Um, so Radoslav Brđanin was charged with 12 municipalities, followed by Radovan Karadžić. So you can see the gravity and actually um, attempt to capture 92 as a crime uh, of genocide in the uh, municipality. So you, you have, um, so if you go down to my chart, which shows something more, uh, it identifies all these seven indictees and it links them and asks whether they were indicted, indicted as officials of RS. Uh, so most of them are except for one person. Can you imagine that only one individual has been charged for 92 genocide from Serbia and the moment Milosevic died, there was no one else to uh, be responsible in a court of law for these crimes. And if you look now into another distinction variable that I put in my uh, analysis is uh, joint criminal enterprise links between individuals for Serbia who were charged uh, and uh, Republika Srpska in indictment. So you, you can see Karadžić, Milosevic, Mladic were actually connected the joint criminal enterprise links uh, so that it could connect Republika Srpska officials with Serbia officials. If you look into the chat, how many of these people were politicians? Majority of them were politicians. And if you now see that in 92, not only Bosnian Muslims were charged in some indictments as protected group, but also Bosnian Croats. And it's still a mystery to me that Croatia did not take genocide of 92 more seriously when doing outreach and cooperation with tribunal, because you see that in four cases, Bosnia and Croats were included in, in uh, initial indictments. And Jeffrey, this is one of your responsibilities, and we discussed it recently uh, in pre-trial brief, before we would start the trial, we actually said that in Milosevic case, we are not going to pursue the genocide against Bosnian Croats. I think it was now in retrospect, probably not such a wise decision, but anyway, this was what happened. And in Ratko Mladic, uh, Radovan Karadžić and Radoslav Brzjan in case, uh, they were all three acquitted of genocide. So we have very interesting situation here that in these cases, 
most recently Karadžić and Mladic, they're all uh, legal links uh, with connecting 92 and 95 cut off. Um, so if we now go to chart that shows Srebrenica genocide, we have here 11 indictees. Uh, and this chart shows how many of them were just indicted as a Republika Srpska soldiers and officials. So you see all of them. And why this question is important? Because all Republika Srpska military people were in the same time, officially, de jure, also members of so-called 30th Personnel Center of Vojska Yugoslavia and were uh, promoted and paid per month by Belgrade. Even their pensions still have been paid by Belgrade. This important topic, this important evidence, you won't see in any of these cases. But funnily enough, in Milosevic's case, we asked and got VJ personnel files, which we immediately connected to Milosevic, where we charged that he was and de jure and de, jure, and de facto uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, busy or uh, in charge of uh, almost whole officer top of uh, Republika Srpska army, uh, including Ratko Mladic, who had very uh, uh, official connections with the chief of staff of the army of Yugoslavia. So if you see uh, which joint criminal enterprise links between Serbia and Republika Srpska were in the indictments, you see only three. And you see which approved none. So this is the way that for, for me is a very clear a uh, factual summary how ICTY mi misjudged the history, not just of genocide, but involvement of individuals uh, from Serbia, but in the same time, uh, state of Serbia, because these individuals were holders of the highest uh, offices. Milosevic was not there because his wife was instructing to him to do something. He was, uh, um, uh, elected um, president of Serbia throughout the uh, uh, Bosnian conflict. I think this is enough for, for the end. We are nearing almost one o'clock and Arif has to leave us, but I will be very much prepared to talk about this uh, more uh, next week. Um, so when you obviously going through those iterations of peace processes, obviously it's really interesting to establish um, intent. But I was just wondering, um, when did the status sort of change from trying to have Sarajevo um, sort of constituted as a UN protectorate um, and then sort of moving it into just a national control area? Uh, Washington agreement. There was a, this huge change from one sovereign plan and uh, Owen Stoltenberg plan because Vance uh, uh, bailed out after failure of um, uh, Vance Owen plan and he was uh, replaced uh, at this position by um, Stoltenberg, a Swedish diplomat who used to be ambassador in, uh, in Belgrade during the Yugoslav times. And, um, and Sarajevo um, became, um, is, is officially now a capital of Bosnia-Herzegovina. It's, um, it is part of this federation of this gray area, which is now called Federation of Bosnia-Herzegovina with the Bosnian Muslims and Croats sharing uh, whatever balance of power there. But uh, do not forget that the part uh, in the hills, Pale, where uh, Karadžić had his wartime quarters and where the whole Republika Srpska assembly fled in uh, April when the war started, is still uh, part of the Republika Srpska. So in a certain way, you can say that uh, Sarajevo as a large area has been divided between Republika Srpska and uh, and, and the Federation of Bosnia-Herzegovina. 
and, and if you see in the uh, six strategic objectives from May 92, uh, uh, Assembly of Republika Srpska claims Sarajevo, you know, because uh, capitals of, uh, of uh, cities, uh, of, of the states, have extremely important symbolical function. Once you uh, conquer London, you know, you, you claim, you know, that you, uh, you won. You know, so that 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 was uh, behind that. 